Here's our first example for actually working through partial fractions from scratch. So we want to evaluate the integral of 2x minus 5 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 with respect to x. And so this is going to be a pretty simple case. We're in the nicest case here. And so let's call the numerator p of x, the denominator q of x. So here's the two things that will make this nice. The first is that the degree of the numerator is strictly less than the degree of the denominator. And the second is that the denominator is going to factor into linear factors with no repeats. So uh, in the future problems uh, in, in, this, in this section, we'll see, see when one or both of these aren't satisfied. But for the time being, uh, we're going to stick with this nice, simple case. So we can see here the degree of 2x minus 5 is 1. The degree of x squared minus 5x plus 6 is 2. So the first point is satisfied. And also we can crunch out 2x minus 5 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we can observe that the denominator factors as x minus 2 times x minus 3 so this is our setup. Now, we're going to go for our partial fractions decomposition. And if assuming that we're meeting these criteria, we are guaranteed that the following process is going to work. We are guaranteed that we can write this uh, fraction in the following way. Something divided by x minus 2 plus something divided by x minus 3, where the, the a and the b here are both constants. So, uh, you know, there's kind of a deep theorem here that will, that is saying that we can do this, but method of partial fractions is guaranteeing that we can find constants a and b such that 2x minus 5 divided by x minus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to a divided by x minus 2 plus b divided by x minus 3. So, so note here, the consequence is this will be great because when we integrate, we'll, re we'll replace 2x minus 5 divided by x minus 2 times x minus 3. We'll replace it with this plus this. And each one of these terms is going to be very easy for us to... It will be very easy for us to integrate. So the tricky part of this is going to be actually figuring out what are A and B in this situation. Okay, so here's, here's the trick. Here's the trick. Let me go to a new slide for, for, for this. So we've got 2x minus 5 divided by x minus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to a uh, over x minus 2 plus b divided by x minus 3. And what we're going to do is that we're going to multiply both sides. We're going to multiply both sides. We're going to clear out the denominator. So multiply everything by x minus 2 and x minus 3. So cancel, 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 cancel. So on the, on the left here, we just have 2x minus 5. And on the right, the x minus 2 will cancel with this x minus 2. And so we'll just be left with x minus 2 times a. And the, sorry what's going on here, the, this x minus 2 cancel this x minus 2, so I got this wrong. What's wrong here? The thing that's left over is that x minus 3. Now for this b here, the x minus 3 cancel with the x minus 3, and now it's the x minus 2 factor that's left here. So we have to figure out what are a and b that make this work, and the important thing is we want to find a and b that make this work for all values of x. 
And so in particular, we're allowed to choose any values of x that we want here uh, to substitute in. We know that this is going to have to be a true equation. It'll help us figure out what a and b are. Know that this is a little bit weird if you've never done this before, because usually we think of solving equations for x. Here, we're allowed to plug in whatever we want, for, want to for x in order to, to allow us to solve for a and b. Now, uh, I'll give you a second. Let's see if you can spot what are good choices for numbers to plug in here. And so, a good first thing to plug in, if we plug in x is equal to 2, this term goes away, and we'll get an equation that doesn't have uh, b in it. It will only have a. So when we plug in x is equal to 2, we get 2 times 2 minus 5. That's minus 1. It's equal to 2 minus 3. That's minus 1 times a plus 0 times b. So our equation is minus 1 is equal to minus 1 times a. And so this tells us that a is equal to 1. Now, for, you, can, you should be able to spot what's, we're halfway done, we figure out what A is, so now we have to figure out what B is. We're going to do the same thing to figure out what B is. And we plug in X is equal to 3 here. That will get rid of this term. We'll have an equation that only has a B in it. So X is equal to 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 5 is 1. Is equal to 3 times 3 minus 3 is 0, a, plus 3 minus 2 is 1 times b. So this is the equation 1 is equal to 1 times b. And so we also see that b is equal to 1. And so what all of this tells us is, let's go back to this slide here. This tells us that 2x minus 5 over x minus 2 times x minus 3 is 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3. So that's the heart of, that's the heart of uh, proving, uh, sorry, that's the heart of the method of partial fractions. It's coming up with these coefficients. Because now we are very close to the end. It's a couple of random pieces of paper that shouldn't be there. Now we are very close to the end. So, 2x minus 5 over x minus 2 times x minus 3 dx. This is the integral of 1 over x minus 2 plus the integral of 1 over x minus 3. And we know that this integral is natural log of x minus 2, and this integral is natural log of x minus 3, and don't forget about our constant. Okay, so, so what's the point? Let me summarize here. What's the point of what we're doing here? We took our rational function that met these nice, nice conditions. The numerator has smaller degree than the denominator, and the denominator factored into linear factors. And so we knew that it was going to, we were going to be able to write it as a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 3. And then this work was all dedicated to figuring out what a and b are. And so once we figure out what a and b are, 1 and 1 here, it makes, it makes integration a cinch.